Hello, dear children. Thus far, we've looked at the structure of the eye. And just to recap the structure of the eye, if you look at this diagram in the center here, showing you the alleys through the eye or the longitudinal section. So there's the structure of the eye again. Let's try and remember some of the mnemonics we learned before we go on and see what role the eye plays in vision, in enabling us to see something that is close to the eye or far away from the eye, etc. So remember we said that the eye has got three layers, the sclera, the choroid, the retina, which you remember by the mnemonic SCAR. Hmm? S for sclera, C for choroid and R for retina. And then we said on the retina, you've got your yellow spot, the area of clearest vision. It's got the highest concentration of cones and the clearest image is formed there. And then you've got the blind spot with no rods, no cones, that's no images formed there. And there's the optic nerve that carries the impulse right to the cerebrum where that impulse is interpreted. Very important to complete it, to say that this is where the impulse is interpreted. Then we spoke about what's up front, where we've got the cornea, the convex cornea, which is protected by the conjunctiva. There's the conjunctiva. So this is the convex cornea. It's also transparent. Convex to bend or refract the light rays coming in so that they meet on the yellow spot of the retina. Then we spoke about the iris, the iris having muscles which control the size of the pupil. Then we spoke about the lens, uh, three features of the lens which you remember using, let's see, let's just get this for you, my darlings, uh, using, did we get the right one? No text using a small mnemonic just for the lens, using the mnemonic B-E-T, which stands for, it is biconvex. In other words, it's convex on that surface, convex on that surface, bi meaning two. That is also to refract the light rays onto the yellow spot. E for elastic, just now you'll see how the lens can be made even more biconvex and even less biconvex. And T for transparent, that's to give you the three features of the lens. Okay, my darlings. And we find that the lens is controlled by this here. Let me just get this undone. By the suspensory ligaments. And the suspensory ligaments are actually controlled by the ciliary muscles. So there's your ciliary muscles. Those are your suspensory ligaments. Good. And that's your lens. Okay, so let's look at the first part of the functioning of the eye. That is to bring about vision. Just common everyday vision. Like when you're looking at your dog. How will you be able to see the dog when that light passes through the eye? So let's look at the pathway taken by light. The easiest way to remember it, my darlings, is just to put a straight line through here to the yellow spot and all the structures which come in that line will be the pathway taken by light. So let's put that straight line, my loves. Let's put that straight line. Hopefully this can be straight, hey? So let's put the straight line right through until it reaches that yellow spot. There we go. So forget about the conjunctiva. We don't mention the conjunctiva. Now the easiest way to remember this, let's just write a mnemonic by which we can remember the pathway taken by light, okay? And once again, that particular mnemonic, my darlings, you can make any mnemonic you want to make. But I'll make up a mnemonic mm -hmm. that looks like this. Come, C-O-M-E, axis. Let's just put it in one line. Come, okay. And play. 
Legos, videos, and yo-yos. Oh, these are like from my age. Okay, my darlings, these are like old fashion toys. You can put your new fashion toys there, okay? Your modern day toys, all right? So come and play Legos videos and yo-yos. Take the first letter of each one. You can make up your own mnemonic, as I said. The C in it stands for the cornea, the cornea, okay? There's the cornea. Let me use something else to show the cornea, darlings. Okay. So there's your cornea here, okay? Cornea. And then what does the A stand for? The A stands for what is in this gap over here. And this gap is filled by aqueous humor. That is a fluid over here which keeps your cornea rounded. So A for aqueous humor. And then the light passes through this hole, P for pupil. And then it passes through the L. Let me just take out the bit over here, babies. Okay, all right. Ooh, then my whole line disappears, but you can follow through. It goes to the P for pupil, then it goes to the L for lens, and then it goes through this fluid here, which is your vitreous humor. Remember, this fluid is much thicker than that fluid. That's why that is called aqueous humor. Aqua meaning water. Mm -hmm. Vitreous is like more like a jelly-like substance which keeps this eyeball rounded. So it goes through the vitreous humor until it reaches the yellow spot and then impulses are created and taken to the cerebrum where it is interpreted. So always complete like that. Once it hits the yellow spot, impulses are created and taken to the cerebrum where it is interpreted. So that gives you the pathway taken by light to bring about vision. Come and play Legos, videos, yo-yos, cornea, aqueous humor, pupil, lens, vitreous humor, and yellow spot. And of all of these here, four of them can refract light rays. So cornea can refract or bend the light rays, aqueous humor can refract, lens can, and vitreous humor. Only the pupil and the yellow spot cannot refract the light rays. I remember this came out in one paper where the students had to know which of the structures can refract or bend light rays. Of course, it has to be the cornea, has to be the lens, and you know that any fluid from what you learned in grade nine, any fluid can also refract light rays. So aqueous humor is a fluid, vitreous humor is also a fluid. Is that okay, my darlings? So this now is the pathway taken by light. Let's look at the second function of the eye, and that is to enable you to see in dim light and in bright light, okay? And that is called your pupillary mechanism. Pupillary mechanism, where your pupil, my darlings, will now, your pupil will now be changed in its size to enable you to see in bright light or dim light. Now, you just got to learn one mnemonic and the opposite would be for bright light. So here in this particular diagram, you can see a mnemonic for dim light, DRC, like Democratic Republic of Congo or Dr. Chetty or whatever, whatever your mnemonic stands for. So for me, it's Democratic Republic of Congo, DRC. What does it stand for? In dim light, the radial muscles of the iris contract. So here, these are the radial muscles, that ones that come out like the radius from this circle, from the center of a circle. So the radial muscles of the iris contract, and what will the circular muscles be doing? The opposite. So what will they be doing? Relaxing. So the pupil gets bigger. Another way of saying the pupil gets bigger, my darlings, is by saying that the pupil dilates. Hmm? The pupil dilates. The pupil gets bigger to allow more light to enter the eye so that you can form a clear image. Hmm? So that's how you remember the pupillary mechanism under dim light conditions.
muscles, yeah? So once again, DRC in dim light, radial muscles of the iris contract, circular muscles of the iris relax, pupil dilates or gets bigger to allow more light to enter the eye so that a clear image can be formed. So now that you know DRC, take the opposite to remember what happens in bright light. So in bright light, if the radial muscles of the iris contract here, what will the radial muscles be doing in bright light? Relaxing. If the circular muscles of the iris relax in dim conditions, what are they going to be doing in bright conditions? They will contract. And if the pupil gets bigger here, what will happen to the pupil in bright light? It will become smaller, or we say it constricts. Okay, my darling? So one word to say pupil becomes bigger, it dilates. Another word to say pupil gets smaller, it constricts. Use the correct terms, my darling. It doesn't contract, muscles contract. Pupil is a hole, so it constricts. Okay, and once again, why would you want your pupil to get smaller so that less light will enter into the eye so that you will prevent damage to the retina? If too much of light enters into the eye, my darlings, you can damage your retina and then you can go blind. Okay, so if you remember the mnemonic for dim light, then the opposite would be for bright light. Okay, so that's a pupillary mechanism. Now let's look at the third function of the eye, and that is accommodation. Now accommodation, you'd find that there's, it is a biological term, which means a change in the convexity of the lens. Let me just make this a little bigger for you. Okay, change in the convexity of the lens. Remember, the lens is biconvex. The lens is biconvex. Okay, and being biconvex, that means it is rounded that side and it is curved this side, curved on that side, curved on that side. So the definition of accommodation is a change in the convexity of the lens for near vision and for distant vision. Near vision is less than six meters from the eye. Therefore, distant vision is more than six meters from the eye. So if you learn the mnemonic for one, let's learn the mnemonic for near vision, then the opposite would be for distant vision. Now, when it comes to accommodation, there are only three parts of the eye involved. So you don't have to worry about your cornea and all right now. It is just the ciliary muscles. It is the suspensory ligaments and it is the lens ciliary muscles, suspensory ligament, and the lens. So only that ciliary muscles, suspensory ligaments, and the lens. Good, just those three structures are involved. So let's see what happens in near vision, okay? And to figure out what happens in near vision, my darlings. There we go. Here's a mnemonic CC SLSLB. So C can stand for somebody, some girl's name. Charmaine, Court, Susan, Looking At, um, Stevens, um, Lovely, Burger. Hmm? Charmaine, Court, Susan, Looking At, Stevens. Oh, Stephen, Looking At, Susan's Lovely, Burger. Whatever. So make up a mnemonic. So if you learn that sentence, then you can work out what it stands for, okay? So what does the CC stand for? Ciliary muscles contract. So there we go, there, the ciliary muscles contract. SLS, the suspensory ligament slackens. So it's like an elastic band or many elastic bands which are not tight, they just loose. So when they slacken, the tension on the lens decreases. In other words, you're not pulling on the lens. So you actually like some of like pushing on the lens and therefore the lens becomes more biconvex. Okay, so therefore LB lens becomes more biconvex. Is that okay, my darling? So that's exactly what happens, but you also have to add 
the refractive power of the lens increases and a clear image is formed on the retina. So if you know what happens for near vision, the opposite would be for distant vision. So once again, ciliary muscles contract, suspensory ligaments slacken, and the tension on the lens decreases. Lens becomes more biconvex, and the refractive power of the lens increases. And don't forget to add at the end, a clear image is formed on the retina to get your full four or five marks. That is for less than six meters from the eye. And the opposite would be for distant vision. So here, ciliary muscles contract here, ciliary muscles relax. Here, suspensory ligaments slacken, suspensory ligaments become taut or tight. So therefore, tension on lens increases, there it was, decreases. Lens becomes more biconvex here, lens becomes less biconvex. Refractive power of lens increases, refractive power of lens decreases. And once again, end with a clear image is formed on the retina. There we go, my darlings. So those are the different functions of the eye. One for vision, which you remembered as come and play Legos, videos, and yo-yos, and the other for pupillary mechanism, which you remembered as DRC, for dim light, what happens. And then we mentioned what happens for accommodation for near vision, where the ciliary muscles contract, suspensory ligaments slacken, and the lens becomes more biconvex also remembering the other parts of the mnemonic as well. Is that okay? So now that we know how the eye functions in all of those faculties, it is now important to know about the disorders of the eye and what can be done to correct it. So let us just put, down, put in some of the disorders of the eye and Let's see if we can put it in there. Okay. The disorders of the eye, first of all, is short-sightedness. Hmm? Short-sightedness, meaning, my darlings, you can see short-sightedness, meaning you can see something close to you, short, short away from you, I always say, close to your eyes, but you can't see things far away. In other words, you'd be able to read a book but you can't see what's on the horizon. Now remember, when you could see something that is close, that is less than six meters from the eye, your lens became more biconvex. And to see something distant, what did your lens have to become? Less biconvex. So with people who are short-sighted, the lens cannot become, who cannot, become less biconvex. Because it needs to become flattened for distant vision. So therefore, to correct this, they say you use glasses with concave lenses. Glasses with concave lenses. Just learn this off by heart. So that's short-sightedness. So once again, repetition. Short-sightedness is where you can see something close to you, like when you're reading a book, but you cannot see something far away from you. And we learned from accommodation to be able to see something far away from you, my darlings, your lens had to become less biconvex. So that means in a person who's short-sighted, your lens cannot become less biconvex. So to correct this, you use convex le concave lenses. By the way, in short-sightedness, you find that these people who are short-sighted, including me, your eyeball tends to be longer than a normal eyeball. I always remember it because short and long are opposite. So you have an eyeball that is longer than normal. So if you're not short-sighted, what is the other problem you could have is that is long-sightedness. Long-sightedness it is the opposite of being short-sighted, means you can see something that is far away or distant, but you can't see something close. Now we learn to see something close, the lens must become more biconvex. So here, your lens cannot become 
your lens cannot become more biconvex. Is that okay? Your lens cannot become more biconvex. You know? And therefore, to correct this, my darlings, you use convex lenses, glasses with convex lenses. Okay? Spectacles or glasses with convex lenses. And once again, here your eyeball is shorter than normal. Opposite of long, your eyeball is shorter than normal. So, babies, short sightedness, you use concave lenses to correct it. Long sightedness, you use convex lenses to correct it. So, the other problem you can experience in your eyes is having a cataract. That is where your lens becomes cloudy or opaque. Remember, your lens must be transparent. So if your lens becomes cloudy, light will not be able to pass through. And the only way in which they can correct this, my darlings, is by having surgery, where you remove that faulty lens and put in an artificial lens. And the other one, which sounds like a big word, astigmatism, astigmatism, is where you have an uneven cornea. Where your cornea is not smoothly rounded, is uneven, is unevenly rounded. And therefore, you would have problems in forming a clear image because not enough light, sorry, my darlings, not enough light will be, uh, not enough light will be passing to your to the yellow spot on your retina. So your cornea is unevenly rounded. And here they say they, you must use unevenly grounded lenses. Unevenly grounded lenses. These are specific lenses made by the optometrists or your optician. So to wrap up the eye, you gotta know the four disorders and how they can be corrected. Short sightedness, you use concave lenses. Long sightedness, you use convex lenses. Cataracts, only by surgery. Astigmatism, unevenly grounded lenses. So, very importantly, we have now covered vision, we've covered pupillary mechanism, we've covered accommodation, and finally, we looked at the disorders that could possibly befall somebody with regards to their eyes and how these disorders can be corrected. It's very important that you learn each of these things off by heart, my darlings. They can come out as level one questions and you gotta capitalize because this is not very difficult to understand. Until I meet you again, God bless. Thank you very much.